So it, there, there's something odd about all of us. I presume that you're not a vegetarian and I'm not a vegetarian. I'm just going to assume that. And But as it turns out, although we eat meat, we don't slaughter our own animals. Okay, I'm going to even push this further. Because of refrigeration, animal slaughter takes place usually very far away. And people don't come into contact with the animals that they eat. They just you go to the store and you buy a piece of chicken. It's all wrapped up, a, a piece of meat. And I'll say it even further. I would say most people who live in that type of society would feel very uncomfortable if one of their animals was slaughtered in front of them and then they, they would feel very uncomfortable eating that animal. It would be weird. It would be very weird to eat a, a, a cow after you pet it, you knew it, you raised it, you fed it. You, you don't even want to see it slaughtered. That would be very, very uncomfortable. And if you saw it slaughtered, you'd be, I think, 99% of people, unless you live in that kind of society, and there are people like that in Papua and in Indonesia, but if you don't, if you live in the city... If you live in Kuala Lumpur, you don't come into contact with that usually. And the, and the same thing, of course, goes for Americans. And the reason is that we are living a lie, meaning we are living in a world where just we don't see animals being killed. So it's very weird to us. And we keep, we keep that out of view because it's upsetting. To most people, just seeing an animal slaughtered would be a very upsetting spectacle okay but that is because today with our technology we don't need to see the animal slaughtered and they don't need to slaughter it in the cities because it's cheaper to raise it far away where the where real estate is much cheaper Kuala Lumpur is some of the most expensive real estate in the world so because of this the sacrificial system sounds weird but you need to know that it sounds weird because we're weird not the Torah because until 100 years ago, people, it was your own livestock, your own chickens that you ate. I mean, it's something you would see in Bali today, something I would see in Papua. I've seen, you know, I've seen but normally people don't. So therefore, if it's a normal experience to slaughter an animal before you eat it, how about if you sin unintentionally, just instead of slaughtering it at home, you bring it to Jerusalem. So then it the whole spectacle of blood and all these things is not there. Well, well, this is a daily event. If you want dinner, the the chickens in the backyard, pick the one you want and you slaughter it and you have it for dinner. No one would do that today unless you live in the country. They have that in Malaysia. You know, if you live out in the villages, so that's how villagers live. But otherwise, that's not how people live. So therefore, therefore, realize that if you're slaughtering an animal in Jerusalem, just rather than at home, so what are you thinking to yourself? You're thinking, well, I am taking the material and raising it to the spiritual. It's something completely different. As I said, this word karban in his Hebrew and in Indonesian. I'm going to guess it's also Malay. The word comes from the Hebrew word karov, which means to come close. All of Judaism is about taking the physical and raising it to the spiritual. Instead of just slaughtering an animal just so you can enjoy a steak at home, which you're permitted to do, Deuteronomy 12, it's fine. But you raise the physical into the spiritual realm, so that's how you serve Hashem. Just like intimacy between a man and a woman. If she's consecrated to you and sanctified to you, so then it's a holy thing to be intimate with your wife. And therefore, it is raising the physical to the spiritual realm, which brings you closer to God, because it reminds you what we're here for. We are here to connect our souls to God. If you, if you have a dog at home, it's very likely that you feel a lot in common with that dog. You, you, you know when you're eating dinner, the dog is watching you and he just wants a little bit of the food from your table, or a lot of it, as much as he can get. 
He, he wants a safe place to sleep. He wants to feel comfortable, and he wants to make babies. That's it. And it's not difficult to relate to a dog or a cat that people have as pets. The only thing is that these animals don't believe in God. They have no soul. They have no nishama. And therefore, we have that. And therefore, it is our whole purpose in our life is to connect the physical to the spiritual. And notice that all these animals, the head and the tail is on the same level on the horizontal plane. Only people walk standing up. Our, our mind, our consciousness, our neshama is here. It's not in our feet. God breathed into this that made us, create us in the image of God. This is where the Spirit of God entered into us. This is why this is a very intimate place. This is why people kiss each other here. What, why kiss? And it's in Tanakh because we're, that's the soul, that's the essence. So the key is to take the physical and raise it to the spiritual. And when you bring an offering, it means that you're connecting the physical to the spiritual, which means you are undoing, you are eviscerating the very cause of unintentional sins, which is not caring and not paying attention to your actions.